Hi, this is ABC. Today we will discuss about software hosting. Early in our videos, we have learned how to look at a database and the UI layer and then as well as three-tier structure. But today we will go through what is software hosting and where do we need that. So, so software hosting is simple, right? If you have a, built a software, you will need a hardware to host that software on, on it. Like it could be a, a laptop where you can host. Now in the laptop, again, your software should be compatible with an OS or a server on which it can run, right? So for example, if you want to run a Microsoft Word software, you need a Windows to operate. If you want a Chrome browser, you need an operating system. For all Android apps can run on Android device, right? So, so similarly, now I have software hosting, right? Let's go next. So what does your software need, right? So we have already discussed, like you have a front end, you have a database, you have a back end, back end is like middle layer. And you also have a file storage, right? Where you can store your images, documents, and assets, right? In front end, again, different uh, framework, React, View, Angular. Every framework will need a, a their kind of uh, server to support. Uh, similarly, database, you can use Postgres, you can use MySQL, you can use Oracle. So all these will need a different sorts of softwares and a hosting requirement. The same thing, uh, Python, Java, Node.js for backend, right? So each component needs a appropriate environment to run. Uh, if, if you want to make a software and then test it locally, you can do it on your laptop itself. Yeah, there are a lot of pre-built Monstack software comes which you can install on your laptop and then, then run your all your software inside it, right? So, so Monstack is basically MongoDB Express, it's basically Node Express and then React and then Node.js, right? So you can have your Node Express framework with the React frontend and MongoDB as a DB. You can make into your local laptop and test it out. But local laptop setup will, is not sufficient for production. So production will look very different. So let's look at the next step. For production, you normally choose a cloud hosting provider. You can also have, you can buy a server a hardware for IBM and, and, and Sun and then use it in your own location by applying the internet and all. But typically nowadays, you normally go to a cloud hosting providers. And you can use a word private cloud or a public cloud to host your software. Now there are big three names in cloud hosting, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. AWS is like mainly for startups, uh, friendly, you can say, widely adopted, extensive documentation, and then a lot of resources available to do AWS, a lot of startups run in AWS. On the other hand, Azure is more Microsoft integrations ready, and then it is more enterprise focused and strong compliance. Google Cloud, here again, if you want to do a lot of analytics, the AI ML capabilities, Google Cloud gives you better. But again, uh, those same things, you can also hire it at AWS. Uh, absolutely no issues. Oracle Cloud is completely the enterprise one. They used to be enterprise focused, but nowadays even the startups can use Oracle Cloud. Uh, their pricing is very complicated now uh, compared to all other ones. Oracle, some, sometime Oracle comes out as a cheaper and a better alternative. So Oracle Zooming are like four clouds, but there are a lot of other clouds you can use, DigitalOcean and other things also you can use. Now how cloud infrastructure works, as we discussed about the Monstack earlier of the laptop, your left everything, storage, processing, database, everything is integrated. But if you compare it to the cloud, all these things are separate, right? So let's say for storage, uh, you can, you are using S3. For your processing, you are using EC2. We are like AWS Jargon, so but Azure or GC, Oracle, GCP or Oracle app, their own journals, but similar one. For database, you are you are running a RDS on AWS, right? And for front-end uh, files delivery to all the, the client laptops or the client devices, you also use a CDL, right? From your infrastructure. Why separate components? Better security. Independently, you can scale database, you can scale EC2, depending on like which part needs more resources, like your EC2. Your compute part needs more resources, you can scale EC2. Your database part needs more uh, resources, you can scale database. And similarly, if you need more storage, you can keep more storage. So these are like fungible, right? So like you configure a laptop with a RAM, with a CPU, with a uh, uh, with a storage, right? A similar fashion, you can you can do the cloud infrastructure, you can scale. And this is this is more reliable. Now, one more thing you need to know when you are hosting a software is basically your code management and deployment. Normally, you keep your code in a code repository, GitHub and GitLab are the two 
the most popular one, but there are other code repository also. And you also use a CI/CD pipeline to keep a code on your repository and then then publish the code from your repository to your server where the software will be served or run, right? So there is a pipeline between a uh, repository and your server uh, to to serve the code. A CI/CD pipeline, I mean, it's a advanced concept for developers. You can learn that, right? It helps you to 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 push new features in real time, take take back old features back, right? Make changes so it helps you. Right? So code management and deployment also you need to know. Now we need to discuss if you are a developer or you are a non-developer. If you are a developer, I think these are easy things to do. You you should be able to understand all this and maybe you can set it up. And you can also start with a boilerplate of code, Next.js and all other frameworks gives you the code. You can use Figma designs. You can use your manage your own database and hosting, and you can just handle full stack. The only thing should be a full stack developer to understand backend, understand content, and you are able to spend that much time and energy to do this. But if you are not a developer, then this whole thing becomes very, very complex because you have to develop the app also, the features also, and then you also have to look over the backend of this whole app, right? So server configuration permission, security against attacks. Compliance, backup and disaster, all these things we have to take care of. Monitoring and load balancing your server is running or it's, it has gone down. Like your laptop is hanged, your cloud server is not working, not responding. You have to look into it, right? So all those things also are required if you are a non-developer. A developer also you require, but as a developer, you can handle it better. Now, the, uh, the summary, right? The key takeaways, right? If you do a self-hosting, you have a maximum control and flexibility. You need a, a, a DevOps expertise, so I always recommend to have a DevOps, a dedicated DevOps if you're serious about your app, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to manage the separate separate cost for EC2, for RDS, you have to pay. And then you you have to have a DevOps a professional as a dedicated one. Now, if you can do the same thing as a non-developer fully managed platform, table sprint is a fully managed platform, Salesforce SAP is a fully managed platform, where, you know, we manage the infrastructure and security. Okay, you can you can take care of only your app part. You can build your app, your features, and everything on table sprint and serve your client using that app. We handle on the backend, we handle the infrastructure, security, compliance, everything. But that's another way to look at it, right? So you can just focus on business logic. Our pricing includes the hosting pricing as well as the software pricing, right? So so that's the fully managed platform. As a bottom line, self-hosting gives you a maximum control but requires dedicated DevOps expertise. If you are building a serious application and tools to self-host, budget for a DevOps personnel from day one. They're essential for security, reliability, and scalability. For teams without DevOps resources, fully managed platforms handle all technical complexity. So you can focus on business logic and user acquisitions. Fully managed platform examples again, Salesforce, SAP, or, or even table sprint, right? One thing you need to, when you are deciding upon that you want to self-host or you want to manage platform, you should always look at cost considerations, no matter in which way you want to do it. You should always look at that. Are you able to do an easy to costing, RDS costing, S3 costing, data transfer and bandwidth? Uh, this, is, this is very important, like how much uh, data you are transferring, which server you are taking, right? And then are you able to optimize all these costs? Because this cost, will not be in your hand and it can it, it can extend like in a flick, right? So so that you have to be very careful when you are planning your self-hosting. Uh, manage platform, again, uh, it's a software plus hosting fee comes in. So you at least know that what price you are going to pay for the managed platform. You don't have to be worried about uh, about your infrastructure. Will it, will, it, will it be available to your users or not? So, so these are the two things which you have to consider and choose your platform to build your AI apps carefully. I uh, hope you liked this hosting uh, video. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel and uh, this video is a part of our AI app building course. So thank you.